Good evening. Before we get started, the invitation song is Victory in Jesus, number 717, Victory in Jesus. I hope we're all doing well tonight and uh, that we're ready for the new year with it being um, New Year's Eve. And I know I'm excited for 2024 as I'll be graduating high school and uh, starting college in the fall. And I'm also ready for our game night tonight. Hope everybody can stick around for it and I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun. So a week and a half ago, the Wednesday before Christmas, if you were here, you would remember that we talked about um, selflessness and how it runs contrary to human characteristics uh, and by running contrary, human characteristics characteristics are naturally selfish. We looked at how you cannot live a truly selfless life without Jesus Christ. You must put him first over yourself, making him greater and yourself less, John 3 verse 30. So tonight, with it being New Year's Eve, it's easy to think back on 2023 and all the great memories that we had, or, or even look ahead to 2024, and maybe you have a special trip or something that you're already looking forward to, but tonight, let's focus on the present, and for the next 10 to 15 minutes, let's just really focus on God, and tonight, I really want us to talk about the topic of strength. So the word strength is mentioned in the Bible around 360 times, and it is often linked to God's power. When we first think of strength, we think of it being physical, as in uh, being physically strong like Samson was in Judges 16 when he got his strength from his hair. And, uh, but although we will not be focused on the physical aspect of strength, you will see later in this lesson why I'm bringing it up now. So where I want us to focus tonight is that God is our help and strength. According to the Bible, what strength we have is not our own. It ultimately comes from God. So if you would like to, open up your Bibles to Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4, that's where we'll be tonight. And Ricky talked about a a different story from Moses this morning, uh, just a few chapters earlier. But in this chapter, in Exodus 4, we see that God is wanting Moses to go into Egypt and to get his people back from Pharaoh. And if you'll read with me, starting in verse 1, it says, Then Moses answered and said, But suppose they will not believe me. Or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, the Lord has not appeared to you. So immediately Moses is, um, Moses is obviously doubting himself when he says, what if they don't believe me or listen to me? And then in verse 2, it says, so the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? He said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand, that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Furthermore, the Lord said to him, Now put your hand in your bosom. And he put his hand in his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous, like snow. And he said, Put your hand in your bosom again. So he put his hand in his bosom again, and drew it out of his bosom, and behold, it was restored like his other flesh. Then it will be, if they do not believe you, nor heed the message of the first sign, that they may believe the message of the latter sign. And it shall be, if they do not believe even these two signs, or listen to your voice, that you shall take water from the river and pour it out on dry land. The water which you take from the river would become blood on the dry land. So we see God is using a couple of miracles to show Moses his power and uh, that he will ultimately be by Moses' side. And then in verse 10 says, Then Moses said to the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. So Moses is still doubting God. And then in verse 11 says, So the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth, or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what to say. So God is ultimately telling Moses that I'm the creator. I have the power over all things, and I will be with you and strengthen you throughout your journey. But then in verse 13, Moses still retaliates God and asks him to send anybody else. And then we see in verse 14, which says, So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. I don't know about y'all, but I would not want the Lord to be angry at me, especially after God has just told Moses that he is the creator who has made all things and that he has the power over all things and uh, that he'd ultimately be with him throughout his whole journey. And then if you flip over uh, a couple of pages to chapter 5, verse 22, chapter 5, verse 22 says, 
And this is a little later in the story, but it says, So Moses returned to the Lord and said, Lord, why have you brought trouble on this people? Why is it you have sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to this people. Neither have you delivered your people at all. So Moses is still doubting God, basically blaming God. And then verses 1 and 2 in chapter 6 says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand he will let them go, and with a strong hand he will drive out his land. So God is telling Moses to just trust him and to put his strength in him, and that Moses will ultimately get his strength from God. And then to finish off the story in chapter 14, verses, verse 21, says that Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord called caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were, waters were divided. So Moses, through God's strength and power, parted the Red Sea, successfully saving the Israelites from Egyptian cap captivity. So when you first experience real strength, it will not be because you finally achieved your own strength, but because you finally gave up relying on your own strength and have allowed God to strengthen you. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Unlike Moses, we are to be strong and courageous, trusting fully in what God tells us, knowing that he will be with us always. And we saw in this passage that God was going to be Moses' strength. Moses just had to let him. Once Moses stopped worrying about himself and focused on leaning on God, he ended up leading the Israelites out of Egypt. You know, it takes great strength for all these guys and the youth, uh, including myself, to get up here and, and lead songs or scripture and a prayer. And, but uh, we all know and have to remember what God has called us to do, which is ultimately to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, Matthew 28, 19 through 20. I brought up physical strength earlier, and maybe some of y'all's New Year's resolutions might be to start working out or going to the gym. And, but when you first start working out, you will not immediately see results. It will take longer than just a couple days or even a few weeks or even a couple months. Your diet, exercise, and sleep can all factor into how much progress you will make. And likewise, in Christianity, it takes time, energy, and effort studying your Bible to really grow closer to God and grow closer as a Christian and strengthen in your faith. So I'd like us to picture being the only Christian in the world, picture being the only Christian in the world. It would really be easy for us to get discouraged and, uh, and overwhelmed, knowing that we are the only Christian trying to bring all these other people to God. That's why I believe that there is definitely a strength in numbers when it comes to being a Christian, because you have so many people who have the same beliefs as you and, and ultimately the same goals as you. And we as Christians find strength through the encouragement of each other. So I saw this example earlier this week, and I thought it would fit uh, really well into this lesson. So I brought with me tonight a basketball. This basketball at any store you may go to is only worth about $20 in my hands. It's worth about $20. But say I give this basketball to Michael Jordan and he maybe signs his autograph on it or, or even plays a game with it, this basketball could, could be up to $33 million. It depends whose hands it is in. So say I have a rod in my hand. Uh, a rod might help me to fend against a wild animal or something like that, but a rod in Moses' hands will part the Red Sea. It depends whose hands it is in. A slingshot in my hands is just a kid's toy, but a slingshot in David's hand is a mighty weapon. It depends whose hands it is in. A couple of nails in my hands may, might help me build a birdhouse, but the nails in Jesus Christ's hands will produce salvation for the entire world. It depends whose hands it is in. As you see now, it depends whose hands it is in. So put your strength, hope, and trust in God, the creator of all things. Knowing that God will be our strength, as said in Psalm 46, verse 1, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. And then in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 11, Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God, so that you may take your stand against the devil's schemes. Those who rely on God's strength from day to day have an ultimate reward. 
a home in heaven one day. At this time, maybe you need prayers from the church or maybe you'd like to be baptized. Whatever your need may be, please come while we stand and while we sing.